I'm not sure of the days, but it has happened in Kenya. So it's not that it has never happened. But for this particular matter, I think we also need to look at the law. Because uh, basically it's not in the Constitution, it is in the Political Parties Act and submit in the Election Act. Which says, as I put it correctly, when you advocate the policies of another party. Now, going down to these six, and I would want to be very clear from where I sit. Have they been advocating? policies of another party, they are in Jubilee. They have not said they are no longer Jubilee members, and the one member in ODM is still an ODM member. I remember as late as, was it three months ago, uh, when Jalango was to be kicked out, he even went for an ODM meeting for him only to be locked out, showing that he's an ODM member. <laughs> um, now, when it comes to the issue of supporting the agenda of another party, mm -hmm. are they supporting the agenda of UDA, are they supporting the agenda of ANC? From where I see it and on record, no. They are only saying, if this bill is good for our people, then we support it. And you know, when you are making laws or we are we're debating something, it is for Kenyans. If I bring a bill in parliament, it's not a bill for Matuga people, it's not a bill for Kenya Kwanza. If it passes, it will apply equally to the whole nation. So I think this is where now people are getting it wrong. That when uh, assuming Mweshimiwa uh, here comes with a bill which is good for this country and I support it. Will I be deemed to be supporting ODM because it came with an ODM member? No. But it is the reverse now where people amplify it that if you are in opposition and you support uh, something on the floor which has been brought by the government then you are deemed to have supported an idea of the other party. I think this is where we are getting wrong. It is not the case and that's why we find it even when now it comes to the due process, yeah. uh, and you know we start with the IDR, the internal disciplinary mechanisms within the party, and then you go to the tribunal before you go to the courts, then that is where now it becomes very difficult. For our case, uh, the last member of parliament was our secretary general, NC. Of course, for him, he was outright. Yeah, you can see we, we used to come here and debate the way we used to talk about the party leader, talk mm -hmm. about the party and clearly show that and goes on to the podium, you will play his clips here saying that I don't support this party, now I'm on this party. And there's gone now to even vie on the party that he said he was supporting. All right. But you see now the court processes sometimes have their own way of doing things, mostly corruption. Let me put it, we are not discussing corruption in hope today here. But you know the courts when it comes to yeah, they do things which sometimes are just even a common man will say, No, this could do that have happened. But they do it. Otherwise, I think as per our standing orders, every member of parliament must belong to a committee. This, I think, this, this, it's not I think, that is as per our standing orders. So even when they kick them out, they'll still belong to a committee. And the question is, when they go to discuss this budget, we don't discuss this budget in terms of uh, you belong to which party. If uh, an item is being zero rated, it will be zero rated and we'll say it's good for this country, like the issue, of, maybe we'll go into the detail about the nitty gritties. Mm -hmm. When you say we're zero rating LPG, Nini, everybody will enjoy cheaper gas. Okay. When you are saying now we are going to escalate VAT on an item, then that will affect everybody. And I don't say any, any member of parliament simply supporting because it is the position of the party when he knows that it's going to hurt the whole nation, unless there are now countermeasures. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Uh, to me, it is unfortunate that one thinks that by de whipping them from a committee, they're actually punishing them. I don't think it works that way. And if they were to vote against something, they will still do it even... In fact, now you are giving them a reason to vote against you, maybe out of anger, instead of just reasoning, <laughs> you know. What is problem. interesting in yeah, politics, yeah. Yeah. Uh, poli we don't need barometer to, uh, to measure, measure yeah. the loyalty. The way you advocate, the way you behave, even the demeanor. So uh, w what the parties are doing, if we doubt, slight doubt, that you may not go on our side. I wish what he's saying is true, but it's not true in Parliament. Even you know this is not right for my people, and it has been told you vote this way, that is the way to go. Uh, and that is what we are fighting, the psychophancy in, in, in Parliament.
that is what we are fighting for. But what he's saying, uh, which is okay, uh, the, the speaker can assign them, fine, we do, but they are not from our party. And now, it is good that you know you are your enemy, yeah. rather than if somebody is hiding under the, the table and you think is going to. So we will, will work extra hard, knowing that they are not going to vote for this and that. But it is clear uh, we cannot sponsor people and then leave them there if they are not towing the party line. So I wanted to say something about uh, this particular, except uh, the ODM member. You know, these are Jubilee senators, and we also have Jubilee members of the National Assembly. And our law is very clear. You can have a pre-election coalition, coalition mm -hmm. or agreements or post. What Jubilee basically have done, they have said, now that the ASME did not form government, we are free to decide to do a post-election coalition agreement with Kenya Kwanzaa. And basically they are right. And this is, a, they have several members. I think there are six senators, National Assembly, they are 20 something. Yeah. So basically this is, a, it is a, this particular party, Jubilee, is a, is a parliamentary party. They will be assigned committees. So basically they are moving, uh, uh, as me, you know, minority whip is whipping them, mm -hmm. but basically they will be allocated even the same committees by the speaker. So this is not an issue. This okay. is not a punishment. All right. You know, they believe that it is a punishment, but they basically they deserve to be in committees and they also have a political right to decide that now that our coalition did not form government and we want to serve our people better, when we're in government, we want to do a post-election coalition. And you've also seen, basically, uh, the law is very clear. Uh, the former party leader was supposed to have also resigned by March uh, this year. And that's, uh, soon they are going to have a new uh, party leadership in Chipli. And they'll fully now come to Kenya Kwanzaa and work for the people well. But well, I, th I think that is the, element in the ele elephant in the room. Yeah. <laughs> You know, this, this issue of government, in the new uh, constitution, is not being defined right. Because we in the legislation, we are a an arm of a government. So there's the judiciary and the executive. So if a senator meant the executive, that should not be a driving factor for parliamentarians. We should remain in our domain. We are also a government on our own. So that should not change the, the fact that if you didn't get the executive, now you resign. You, if we can get out of that, I think Kenya will be different mm. so that we can play our roles as elected leaders. Interesting times we live in, gentlemen. <laughs> Kasi, Mike, uh, you want to add your voice before we shift focus? You see, uh, uh, I'm sure Mwesimua here would have been very happy if they formed in the government as a parliamentarian, not as part of the executive. Yes. <laughs> but, since, but not you know, over this, happy. This is a, <laughs> this is a case of while we are saying, we are saying, we are saying, that is what is simply said. But what I know, uh, going forward, and I think it started with the previous government, mm -hmm. when even uh, Raila himself abandoned the opposition and yes. joined the government. You see. So here we have presidents, uh, presidents from the patriarch himself, where he would want to join the government after losing an election. Uh, not just in the previous election, I think this is the history of Raila, that whenever he loses, he tries to go into the government. This is on record. And I, why, I don't know why you are looking at me with a very bad eye much more. <laughs> but you know that is the truth. Okay. So, I think as uh, he says that, he should know that it is Raila himself who has been leading by example. That when you lose, you join the government. It had happened, it has happened, it happened. And I think even now, there are some attempts for him again to move towards that direction. Sasa, baba kienda mtoto unafanya nini? I think that is where the problem is. But I think going forward, I think we should be able now to streamline these things. I'm not saying I support that kind of behavior, but we are having a behavior which has been orchestrated by none other than Raila Amolo Odinga himself. And well, I think that's where the kids are having a problem. And that cannot go. <laughs> <laughs> We're not here to malign characters. But no, it's not maligning. Yes, yes. Is it not on record? 
know, yeah, it's on record. You know, you know, you know the, <laughs> yeah. the, there could be good things Tandaza would have said about uh, Baba. <laughs> no, Baba is a very good that, man. That uh, whenever that. he loses, unfairly, he still <laughs> embraces peace. Mm. So that people can 